Hello everyone. Um, I'm working on a Skoda Yeti here. I I worked on a gearbox at some stage. I changed the gearbox. The gearbox wasn't selecting the reverse gear, so I changed it. And then immediately after that, I got uh, a complaint. So the reverse lights were not working. So this is what I want. I'm going to try and 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 get it sorted for you i just want to show you um, how to diagnose the problem quicker i'll be using a wiring diagram so but first uh, let's confirm uh, the complaint first right so i'm inside the car as you can see the diagram i have to push down right and then select that's the reverse gear selected so um, I'll get to show you at the back uh, that there are no reverse so we have confirmed that there are no reverse lights right I'm gonna take it out of the reverse gear and now I'll take you to to a wiring diagram and show you what the wiring diagram for a Skoda Yeti looks like. So here is the wiring diagram for a Skoda Yeti. Uh, let me see. So remember 30 is permanent live and 15 is uh, ignition live. So if we come, so we have got power here coming through to the fuses, uh, but where I just want to show you where my interest where I'm interested in. I'm interested in this in this fuse here, fuse number 21. As you can see, uh, this fuse number 10 to 1, if we follow this line, right, it brings us to a reverse gear position switch. See that? So it is a two-wire sensor. You've got pin one and pin two. So where do you start to diagnose this thing i'm going to show you a quick way of doing it i can start at the top here you see here i can start with the fuse i can start uh actually i can continue and actually go and check uh let me see yes. do, do, do. There is my reversing light. I can actually come and, and start checking here. But I I'm not going to do that this time. I know that it is recommended. But I'm trying to kill time here and, and do something really fast. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here on pin 1 and pin 2. So if I come to pin 1, I'm expecting to get you know, battery voltage, roughly 14 if the engine is running, 12 when something if the engine is not running. So that's what I'm expecting to get. That, then that will confirm that my fuse is okay. I don't need to come and check the fuse once I get uh, 14 volts here on pin one. Then uh, I'll then engage the reverse gear and then check pin two. I'm expecting now when the this switch is closed i'm now expecting pin 2 to be 14 volts as well okay and if pin 2 is 14 volts what it means it means that my fuse at the top is fine this wire here the black and brown it is perfect and it also means that the switch itself it means that it is fine so then uh, it leaves then uh, this wire here coming to the module right and then the bulbs but now I'm gonna jump once I get 12 volt battery voltage here on pin 2 I just want to jump and leave the module alone and come and check my lights I'll come here to pin 4 and work backwards understand what I mean I'll, I'll then work backwards uh, but before I even check pin 4, I'll check if if my um, 
my, 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 my lights are working first. If not, then I'll start from here going backwards to the module. I think that is, that is simple and straightforward. Okay, so this is the wiring diagram. So now I'll take you back to the car and then we'll do these tests and see where we get to. Right, so now I'm, uh, I'm on the reverse switch and these are the two wires. So I'm on pin one, okay? Uh, here is my meter. I've selected voltage, okay? So I'll go find ground. You watch the meter there. See, we are getting 14.7 volts. What does that mean to you? It means that the fuse is fine. It means that the wire from the fuse uh, to the switch, to pin one of the switch is fine. So now we want to go on to uh, pin two and then we will select reverse and then see because that once we select reverse this voltage should continue to p2 and then go to the module then to the light so i'll move then my um, So now I'm on pin two, but I'll need to select a uh, reverse. And you keep on watching. Uh, let's see if we are going to get you know, 12 volts. So even if reverse is selected, we are getting zero. So we have a problem now from the switch uh, to the output side of the switch. So let's try and figure out where could the problem be. Right. I have I have a similar setup here as the selector. Right. So, let me show you something. So, you can see, you can, whenever you want to select reverse, you push, push down and then select. So now we are in reverse. Okay, so I want to use this switch here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'll come, I'll come here and I disconnected so I'm gonna connect onto this other switch and then we want to go ahead and check for power we are still on pin number two with the other switch we got zero so with this one here you don't you don't need to do this you do not need to do this but the fact that I have a spare one I just want to show you quickly so that we can determine what is wrong. So, right, okay, here we go. Same position I go and ground it. Look at that. So now we are getting 14 volts on pin 2, but we could not get 14 volts with the other switch. So, where is the problem? Is it the switch? Or is it the selector fork itself? So what is the easiest to do? The easiest is to swap these switches now and then and then see uh, or else what I'm what I'm going to do I'm going to to check if the reverse lights are working. 
right everyone i'm using that other switch my reverse lights are now working okay the reverse lights are working so we have diagnosed the problem here uh let's swap this the switch and see was this not quick i think you love this one you know it, it's just quick and straightforward i could go long and long and long and long i haven't even touched the bulbs i didn't come to the bulbs so let me go back uh quickly uh, swap the switch and see is it the switch or is it the selector forget so itself but i think it is to do with the switch So, spanner number 22 should do this, should do a good job for you. I can switch the whole housing, like, but I'm just thinking, what is handy here? Okay. So, that's our switch. If it doesn't work, then we know it's it's the selector itself. So let me see if I can get in here and be able to. Thank goodness me, this this might require me. To, no. Let me see. It's always the way. Time is money. I think you will agree with me, guys. That the quicker we diagnose these problems, the more jobs we do in a day, because time is fixed, you'll have eight hours to work, unless if you want to work until 12 midnight. But it's not good for your health. It's not good for your family, if you're a family person. So let's see. I'll show you once I take this one off. So here is our problem. I don't know if you can see this. Can we? Good. Is that clear? Yeah. Do you see that one of the pins is flattened? Okay. One of the pins is flattened. That's why we were not getting reverse. So this explains the mystery. Look here, guys. Uh, this is diagnosis. Okay. Diagnose and rectify. Level three, guys. This is what we want you to do. When you do your job cards, don't rush things. Go step by step and show. So now uh, we know what is causing the problem. If we didn't, I didn't have another switch, I could try and fix this one because it should work, okay? There's nothing wrong. If I can lift that pin up, uh, it should work, okay? So this was the cause. So I'm going to fit another, another one anyway because I have it. So just to assure you, this one is good, okay? All the pins are straight up, so you can't beat, you know, uh, when you are a technician, you want to make sure that when you're going to change something, you know what's wrong and you can prove that that's what's wrong. You're not just changing parts. It's easy to change parts in our in our field. That's what we normally do, you know, people just change parts. And then they find that something is not working and then they go, can we try something else? And they're not even shy to try something else. No, guys. This might look simple, but that's the same method that you do for other things. I mean, anything, you know, electronic, I would say to you, just follow the same. You'll never go wrong. 
and cliff this is what you and me were talking about about that lorry that you were telling me about so i think you love this video because this is what the guys were supposed to do you know with the um fuel pressure sensor so i hope you'll enjoy this video guys uh let me just f do the final touches here and then confirm now that the the lights are now working I have my, uh, I'm still on pin two. I'm, I've engaged reverse. Now we are getting power on both pins. And I'll take you to the rear and show you that the lights are now working. That's the reverse gear selected there, okay? And you can see the ignition key is on. And let me come to the lights. Bingo. We have our reverse lights now working. That's the Skoda. They are working both sides. The reason why I didn't bother myself checking, you know, the bulbs was, I just, you know, eliminated that by thinking, what could cause two bulbs? What are the chances of two bulbs, you know, going at the same time? So that's why I diagnosed this problem the way I did. Okay, so I hope you'll enjoy this video um this is jamros electronic solutions we're back again with another video for you i hope you are going to enjoy uh this video please give us your likes and uh if you don't mind sharing this video with your friends and you know students feel free to pass this one from one to another and um you can use this video for whatever you want i don't mind you know um, as long as you can promote us, you know, that's the whole idea. We, we want to learn and teach each other how to do these things. So thank you very much for your time. This is another video from Jamro's Electronic Solutions. The problem is fixed.